My name is Kelvin Lee. I'm the uh, Jacobs Family Chair of the Department of Immunology and the Senior Vice President of Basic Sciences at the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. They are both about 95% effective. And what does that mean? In the clinical trial, half the patients were vaccinated with a placebo, which didn't do anything, it doesn't do anything, and half of them were vaccinated with the, uh, with the, the vaccine itself. And then they just simply follow along to see where, which group gets infected. So when uh, they looked at this, 95% of people that got COVID-19 were in the placebo group, and only 5% were in the vaccinated group. So that's why you hear the idea of 95% protection, because, you know, essentially everybody that didn't get vaccinated or people that didn't get vaccinated, the, that was where all the infections happened. So as far as we can tell, based on the initial clinical uh, phase three clinical trials, both vaccines are about equally effective. And they're actually very effective compared to, you know, the flu virus is only about 50% effective. So 95% is pretty darn good. There isn't really anything from a brand standpoint that should, uh, that should influence a consumer, for example, in picking one or the other. Now, the scientists are gonna follow the performance of these individual vaccines because they are, they're made differently. And we will know maybe in a year or two years if one actually over the long term performed better or worse than the other one. After you get vaccinated uh, and after you get boosted, uh, it looks like based on the antibody responses people are seeing that protection probably kicks in around two weeks later. Now you're gonna get some protection from the initial vaccination and you'll get more protection after you get boosted. And so it's not all or none, it's this rising level of protection. But it looks like it takes the immune system probably in the range of two to four weeks to really get maximal prote protection under. How long they will protect you, people don't know because simply there hasn't been enough time uh, since the start of the clinical trials to say, any more than two months worth of protection, right? Because that's as far as the trials have gone. We will learn that as time goes on. So we will be fo closely following patients that got vaccinated and specifically looking at their immune responses and whether or not they get infected to answer the very question, how long does the protection last? Now, again, in the short term, for people that are at higher risk to get exposed or suffer from getting infected, any kind of protection is useful. But in the longer term, we will need to figure out how long does the, the protection last, whether or not people need to be vaccinated, uh, re-vaccinated, re-boosted every year, or whether or not you have lifelong immunity after the first set of vaccines. So the short answer is yes. Uh, if you get COVID-19, you can very clearly transmit it to other people. Again, the vaccine is not 100% effective. It has, at least in the initial studies, you know, 5% of people that got vaccinated actually got infected. So it is not a, you know, it's not a golden ticket. You're not protected 100%. If you do get infected, uh, you, and you have symptoms, you are somebody that can spread COVID-19 uh, to your nearby contact. Again, that's something that we will figure out. Whether or not you need to be revaccinated with the COVID vaccine, we will learn more about that as time passes. So I think that within a year or two years, we'll have a much better idea of whether or not it needs to be an annual vaccine, or if you get vaccinated like measles, you get vaccinated once, you're protected for the rest of your life. Yes, we need to continue doing all the things, masking, social distancing, hand washing, being careful, because until nobody die, is dying of the virus, we need to take every possible uh, action that we can to defeat this virus. So that includes the vaccination, but that includes everything else. Because again, it's going to be months before the vaccine is generally available to the public. So we need to continue to uh, do all the, the things that we're doing now to prevent the spread. 
And there are other questions as to that we still don't know for sure if you're vaccinated and you get asymptomatically infected. So you got vaccinated and you're infected, but you have zero symptoms. So there's no reason to actually anybody to actually check if you are, you know, infected. Whether or not the vaccine actually protects, you know, prevents you from spreading the virus anywhere else. Those things we don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a nuanced question, but the way the trials were designed is that they only looked at you uh, and checked you if you were infected, if you got symptoms. If you were infected and didn't have symptoms, the trials were not designed to pick up that population of, uh, of people. And we know that the younger population, in fact, do get a lot of COVID, uh, uh, they get infected, they have zero symptoms at all. So we don't exactly know how the, the vaccine performs in that population. So that means that we still, until we know, until we discover, you know, until we do the science and the research to look at that, assume that everybody else has COVID, they should mask, social distance, hand wash. When Roswell gets vaccine, it will say Pfizer on it, and you will be, you will get a card that says you got the Pfizer vaccine. And then when Moderna vaccine comes in, you'll get a card, if you get vaccinated with that, you'll get a card that says you got the, uh, the Moderna vaccine. So both uh, the company, the state, and the federal government follow every patient that is, every person that's been vaccinated for both uh, whether or not they get COVID and what kind of side effects they are. There are in fact large formal reporting structures uh, that are, are web-based and, and so forth to follow all those uh, patients because again, uh, we need to understand as we vaccinate larger groups exactly what the side effects are once we start to vaccinate hundreds of thousands of people, what the side effects are and what the effectiveness in preventing COVID-19. So that's all being formally tracked. First part is when will we have enough vaccine to vaccinate the general population? The guess would be that that's going to occur within the 12 to 18 months, uh, depending on the ability of the companies to ramp up their uh, production capability and also depending on how many vaccines come onto the market. Because if we have one vaccine, that's different than if there are five different vaccines that are all equally effective that are on the market. So that's one component. The second component is when will there be enough people that get vaccinated to protect, you know, to, to uh, lift the restrictions. So the guess is that you need about 70% of your population to be immune to any virus uh, to sort of break the chain of transmission and give you herd immunity. Okay, so right now we're probably looking at five to 10% of the U.S. population that is that is got immunity to COVID because they've been infected by it. So we have a long way to go before we get to 70%. And a lot of that is going to depend on whether or not people get, want, get vaccinated, right? Because the vaccine is not gonna, it's likely not going to be mandatory. So people will want, they will have to want to get it and we'll have to be able to, you know, get it into 70% of the population before there isn't even a reasonable chance that we can be able to lift restrictions.